Okay, now we're going to show you an example of measuring uh, an operation on both a list and a dictionary. Uh, this particular code we're going to show you will make available and it's a really good um, code that you can start with and modify it to do your actual programming assignment. It's uh, much easier to use than the one the book supplies. Uh, so first what we want to measure, we're going to measure uh, searching for an item whether it's in a list or whether it's in a dictionary, it's the in operator. Uh, so we're going to uh, import the uh, timer class from the timeit module. And this is our uh, thing to build a list. So this is the fastest way to build a list, and we'll cover that in a short way. But this will build a list with the uh, numbers 1 up to n minus 1 in the list, because it's going to convert everything in this range to a list. This builds a dictionary, and they show you this in the last listing of the chapter. So it's uh, it's like list comprehension, but you use curly braces like you do for a dictionary. And you have a tuple here, which is the two formulas you want for the key and the value. And, so you, so, and then you have a regular four like you have in a list uh, comprehension. So this loops for i in range n. So i is going to be 0 up to n minus 1 and then it assigns the keys for the dictionary, those numbers. And for the data, uh, I just set the data to the string uh, of the number. So the first entry in the dictionary will be the number 0, and the key will be the string uh, with the 0 in it. And the next one will be the number 1, and the, the uh, value will be uh, a string with the number 1 in it, and so on. So then this will be what we're going to be actually timing. And you'll notice we're using the in operator. So this uh, looks at, um, at first it converts 0 to a string. And it checks is that in x. And then it converts n divided by 2, which is halfway through the list, to a string. And it checks if that is in x. And then it converts the uh, index number of the last thing in the list and see if that's uh, x. So it's going to find all these. The reason I do three of them is some uh, operations when you're doing, uh, uh, if something's in it, does a search. And so if it's at the end of the list, it's very slow. And if it's at the beginning of the list, it's very fast. So what we'll do here is if there's actually an, one of these is O of N that's more significant than the others, it'll dominate uh, in this timing. So we're basically going to be, when we time this, it'll time doing I and X all at once. So it'll get the sum of these times, and whatever one of these grows the fastest will predominate uh, when we eventually figure out what, what big O it is. And finally, I, I look for something that's not in the list. So you should also check operations that uh, are valid but, but uh, don't give a result. So in this case, we're searching uh, for something not in the list. And sometimes this operator is very slow on, on certain ways of implementing list or arrays. Uh, so that's going to look for what is the predominantly slow of all these operations. In your assignment, you should also uh, probably take three. You're going to be doing deletes. You probably should delete the first, the middle, and the last element. Uh, just be careful you do it in the right order, uh, because the last element will be gone if, you, uh, if you've already deleted the first element. So now we're going to set up our timer objects. And uh, so we covered this in the previous slide. So there's nothing new here. Uh, we have build list in and inx. We need to make these symbols available to the timeit module from main. And then we have a second statement which says uh, build the list and store it in x. And then the next thing it builds a dictionary. So the only thing different here it uses build dictionary, and it calls build dictionary to return a dictionary into x. Notice our thing for timing things, this works on either a dictionary or a list. So we're actually using the same method for both timings. And that's the uh, polymorphic, uh, this is a polymorphic function that works on different types of data as long as it supports the n operator. Okay, now we're actually going to do the timing. Now you want to do this exactly the same way. So the first thing you see is we print out some headers at the top of a column of numbers. Where we're going to make a column of numbers. So the headers of the letter are n, and then we output a tab, 
and then the word list and then we output a tab and the word dictionary. So why we're doing the tabs is we're going to copy everything it outputs here and paste it into a spreadsheet. And what spreadsheets do if they see a tab character they will separate each uh, thing on the, between the tabs into separate columns in the spreadsheet. So backslash T uh, is a way of composing something so it will automatically go into separate columns. So this will become the first three columns. And then we, uh, we go through uh, um, how big the list is or dictionary. So we're going to set uh, the size of the list or dictionary starting at 1,000 going up to 100,000 plus 1, so it's actually going to go up to the number 100,000. So this is a range, and it's going to jump 5,000 at a time. So that's going to give us a bunch of different sizes that we're going to end up plotting. Um, this is a little unusual, but uh, you'll notice that our, our INX function, when it gets called in the timer, it passes at n, and n is one of the, uh, the module variables and so we need to set n equal to the size so it copies the size for this for loop to the module variable n so that when we do the time uh, uh, list repeat it uses the right n so as it goes through this loop n will be a thousand and then it'll be a uh, thousand plus five thousand so six thousand and so on so what it does is it gets a list of the seconds here so it has time list repeat, and it's going to repeat the timing five times to account for uh, variations in the computer. And it's going to do five sequences of calling this, so that'll average out variations. And what we want to do is get the minimum of those five times as representative of the, the best case timing. So we end up with two lists, one for the, the timings for list and the timings for dictionary. And then we print uh, the minimum of each list. So that's going to be the best time. And so what we print is n, a tab, the minimum of the uh, list for seconds, and then a tab, and then the minimum of the list for uh, the dictionary. So let's go ahead and run this. And then we're going to show you how to put it into Excel. So it takes a while to run, and we just have raw numbers here. So we have three columns with tabs in between the columns. So I'm going to highlight everything up and include the N, and then I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to switch over to Excel. And uh, we have a blank spreadsheet. I'm just going to paste it. And you'll notice it uses the tabs to separate things in the columns. Give it a little time here. I'm on a uh, Mac, so this is actually Excel uh, 2011, but this will also work with uh, Excel 2013. And so it inputs three columns and numbers. This is in, so it's got a label at the top. This is the times for the list. This is the times for the dictionary. You'll notice they're very small. Okay, and so we're going to leave it just like that because it has selected this range. And uh, we're going to go to the Insert menu and say Insert a Chart. And I think this works the same in 2013. If it doesn't, you can look it up. And you get a choice of what kind of chart. And we want what's called a scatter chart. So you just click on scatter. And you want this uh, one that shows the little dots. Uh, you can also do this one, which has, has curves between it. But I'm going to do this one. And it actually does the plot. And you can resize this and move it around. And for the purposes of the assignment, you just want to put the data and the chart next to each other. And you'll see that uh, it plotted the blue lines are the list. So it picked up the labels up here. The red lines are the dictionary. And if you look at this, you'll see the dictionary is very fast and it's constant. So as the this is the size of the problem. As the size of the problem gets increasing, it doesn't cost any more to uh, to do the uh, test of settings in a dictionary, but as the size of a list uh, gets increasing, you have a, it increases this, the time it takes. And it's a straight line, so uh, I'll leave you to figure out which one that is. Uh, but this is what you would turn in. You would do this and turn in your Python file. So there's actually two files you turn in for the assignment. Now you may not have Excel. 
in any form, but you can always use Google Docs. So I also brought up Google Docs in a, uh, a page here. So you create a blank Google Doc, and you're basically going to do the same thing. So you're going to paste the data into Google Docs. So there it is. Leave it highlighted, because we're going to do a data on that chart. There's a little icon for charts here. So you're going to say Insert Chart. Um, and you want to choose the right kind of chart. So what we're going to do, this should be, let's go to Charts. And you want the Scatter Chart. See how the, the icon even looks similar to Excel? And you want this one here that shows dots. And it's going to show you what it's going to look like. You'll see it looks very much like the one we did in Excel. And you do Insert. And then you can move this around. Uh, once it settles down here, oh, we'll get a hand. Once you see the hand somewhere, you can move it around. So position the chart next to the data again click somewhere and you can then submit this file. Uh, well how do you submit a uh, Google Docs file? Uh, so the way to do it is you go to file and what you you're on a web page actually in Google Docs so you download it either as an Excel document or a PDF document. So I'm going to download it as a PDF document and you just want the current sheet and uh, I think that's it. We'll just do export it should download. And there it is. So let me open it up. So this is where it is in the finder if you uh, now want to upload it for your assignment. And so I'm going to open it on my Mac and on your PC you would open it with uh, uh, Adobe Reader. And there it is. So you just submit that file as part of your homework. When you submit your homework, you're going to submit two files, this spreadsheet uh, from either Excel or Google Docs, or if you have some other spreadsheet program, you're welcome to do that. Uh, and, but send me the file in PDF in that case, or something I can read like Excel. And uh, then you're going to also s upload the actual Python file that produces the data. That's it.